just like the domain of a function is all the values of x that you're allowed to plug into a function, the range of a function is all the values of y that you can get out from it. What I mean by that is, you can plug in anything you want for x here. x could be 0, x could be negative, a billion, it could be positive 17.6, it doesn't matter. And all y does when you plug in a number for x is it doubles it. You just multiply that x by 2 and you get your y out. So what can y be? Well, if x was negative, it's still going to be negative, just double what it was. If x was 0, it's going to be double 0, which is still 0. If x is positive, it's still going to be positive. x can be anything and y can be anything as well. So we say that the range of this function is that y can be any number we want. y is an element of the real numbers. You'll have to accept this is how we write y can be anything we want. Where you'll run into more complicated ranges is when you have squareds. Because when you plug in a number for x here, you're squaring it. And when you square any number, it becomes positive. Remember, negative 3 squared becomes positive 9. The range of y equals x squared is that y will always be greater than or equal to 0. You can't get a negative number out of this function. And as long as that's satisfied, y can be any real number. Again, y greater than or equal to 0, because y has to be either 0 or positive. More likely what you'll be asked is to find the range from a graph. Now here's an ugly little graph that I've drawn. And the range, again, is the y's that you can get out. So, well, I can't get negative 3 out. I can't get negative 2. I can't get negative 1.5. Here at negative 1 is where the graph starts, in terms of up and down at least, in terms of the y. And it goes all the way up to positive 2. y can be anything in between there. See, it can be 0. It's 0 there and there, actually. It's 1 here. It's uh, 1.5 here. Y can be anything in between and including these numbers. So we say that the range goes from negative 1 all the way up to 2. Y can be anything between negative 1 and 2. And barring that, Y has to be real. This it will be the most common type of question that you're asked. The range for a parabola. Why? Because a parabola always has a maximum or, if it opens up, a minimum. This parabola goes as high as 4. The coordinates here are negative 4 and positive 4. It goes as high as 4 on the y-axis. And it opens down. It can be anything that's 4 or less. It can be uh, negative 3. It'll even go down to negative 100, negative 1,000 if we keep keep going down, because that arrow means we go down infinitely. The range of this parabola is that y is less than or equal to 4. Less than or equal to because we're opening down. And barring that, y needs to be a real number. Keeping that example in mind, what about the range of this function? Well, this parabola, which you should recognize the form of, has a vertex at positive 3 and negative 7. Remember to flip the sign here. Positive 3, negative 7. And it opens up because there's no negative out in front. So this is a minimum. In other words, y has to be bigger than or equal to that number because it opens up from negative 7. And of course we put in the y-e-r. 
finally, you could be given one like this. Now this is not written in the vertex form that this is written in where you can just read it right off, positive three, negative seven. Now nope, you're gonna have to find the vertex on your own. You can do this a bunch of ways. You can complete the square. You can use a formula like negative b over two a. I'm sure you have some way to find the vertex of this parabola. When you find it, it turns out to be, I believe, uh, positive one and negative nine. Again, it opens up because the number out in front is positive. Well, I mean, it's positive one here, right? There's nothing in front of the x squared. And so the range here is that y has to be bigger than or equal to its minimum, which is negative nine. And it has to be a real number. Being able to find the range of functions from graphs and being able to find the range of parabolas are the key skills that you're going to need here.